All right, now, folks, um, it's a beautiful day to make a mess, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Today we're going to be discussing leaks, uh, how to identify what's leaking and where it's leaking from on your motorcycle, and how to repair it. Uh, these are the seven basic fluids that you'll find in your motorcycle. We have gas, brake fluid, gear, oil, um, antifreeze, regular motor oil, water, and battery acid. Um, gas and oil are probably the two most common ones that you'll find leaking, uh, but it, you know, if you have a leak, it could be any of these seven. Um, so today we're going to pour each of these out on the ground, tell you how to identify them, um, and I'm going to show you where they leak from. Alright, so first thing you guys will notice that I do is I use several different senses when identifying um, a leak. Uh, this is a little bit controversial to some people. Some people would never touch gasoline, let alone really get your nose into it, let alone taste it. Um, but I use a lot of my different senses, and I'm going to tell you guys, uh, I'm going to show you guys how you can get fooled um, into thinking you have one type of leak or another if you just look at it, for example. So here we have gas. Pour a little bit out. It's basically clear. New gas is just as clear as water is. Um, if you've ever filled up your car with gas, you know exactly what it smells like. There's really no uh, no confusing it with anything else. It's got that real noxious smell. And uh, the one thing about gas is it's, uh, it's very volatile, so it evaporates very quickly. So if you have a slow gas leak, you might not notice it for a little while. You might just smell a smell and not really know where it's coming from because uh, it can drip out and then evaporate and it's almost clear. It just stains the ground just a little bit where it once was. If you find that you have a gas leak and you're not sure where it's coming from, you can narrow down different parts of your motorcycle that are the most likely to leak gas. The first is obviously the gas tank. This is where all the gas is held. Sometimes you might get a piece of damage like where we have this bump right here. Um, or it might actually be rusting through and you have a tiny little pinhole and that's where it's leaking from. So first look at your gas tank, make sure it's not leaking from there. Second, you've got a variety of gas lines which, de which deliver the gas to the carburetors. This goes through the petcock, which is over here. Your petcock and your gas line, which is right in here. Um, if you have old rubber, old clamps that don't seal as well as they used to, or you have bad seals in your petcock itself, um, it can leak from out there, right here, or actually out this faceplate right here. I see that a lot. So next you've got your carburetors. If your carburetors are overflowing, they will often leak. They can leak either from your overflow ports which are right here, um, either on the bottom of the, of the carburetor float bowls or you actually have overflow nipples in between the carburetors or they can be coming out of the boots in the air box. So what will happen is gas will flow into them, it'll fill up, your carbs overflow so they continue to fill, 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 fill and then the gas will come out here if you've got a break in your uh, carburetor boot or it might actually go into your air box and down and out here because a lot of air boxes have a little drain hole for just that reason. Um, similarly, depending on the setup of your motorcycle and the, um, the different configurations of it, your gas might actually leak into the motor, then goes down into the motor, into the sump, and will leak out, and it will leak out as a mixture of gas and oil. Um, and it will look like a massive oil leak, and this is why, uh, this is why I mentioned you have to really touch and smell these fluids because it looks like a massive oil leak but really the problem is not in the not an oil leak it's a gas leak and I'm going to uh, cover that a little bit more uh, when I talk about oil leakages um, also you might find that if you're only running on one cylinder for example and one cylinder is not firing gas will be pulled from your carburetor which might be behaving normally into your engine spun around, you know, compressed and then expanded without exploding and then it will go into your exhaust. And if you have 
let's say you have a two-cylinder bike and you have a straight two and two exhaust it will just come right out and it might not even explode as backfire it might just come run out and then come out the exhaust and so you'll have like little plifferings out here or it might drip in you know from a seam right here so you can actually have unburnt gas dripping right out from your uh, um, from your exhaust so think about the entire combustion system involving the tank, petcock, fuel lines, carburetor, airbox, motor, and exhaust when trying to find that gas leak. So next one is brake fluid. Pour a little bit out. Brake fluid is also clear, but you'll notice that um, it's a little bit thicker than gas. If you touch it, rub it around in your fingers, it's got a, a very oily texture to it. You can smell it, and it's, I mean, there's no mistaking it for oil, or gas, really. It's got a very distinct smell. I mean, these things are hard to describe. They just smell real chemically because they're, you know, manufactured chemicals. But if you go and buy a bottle of this stuff to fill up your bike or whatever, give it a good whiff so you know what it smells like. Um, also, I'll find that um, brake fluid will dry out my hands pretty well. Um, I don't mind touching it. A lot of guys do, I mean, like I said about the gas, if I'm ever confused about, well, is this brake fluid or is this, you know, oil coming out or, or whatever, I'll actually even put a little bit in my mouth. Wow, that tastes gross. But, uh, yeah, if you guys don't want to do that, that's fine. You know, I'm sure some people are going to freak out when they see that I've done that. Don't worry about it. I haven't had any adverse reactions, adverse reactions, adverse reactions, adverse reactions. No, um, yeah, it's just fine. You know, taste it, spit it out, you'll be fine. All right, so I'm, let me show you guys uh, where brake fluid can come from. All right, brake fluid, I'm going to show you guys the entire brake system. Um, it can come from any of these places. First, you're going to start out at your master cylinder up here. Sometimes either the sight glass will leak or you'll get leaks up in here. Or if you pop this off right here, your banjo bolt you might get some leaks. You can follow this down, check for cracks in your um, brake line here. Oftentimes, especially if you have uh, dual front brakes, but uh, even if you don't, you'll find that there's like a junction up in here where there's another banjo bolt that connects to this, you know, this, this cylinder. And then you've got another banjo bolt and then it comes out again and it goes down. So, I mean, if you don't assume that this is all one connected piece right here because very often it isn't. All right, so we're gonna look for cracks all along down here. Gonna go in here, same thing, another banjo bolt, and then you've got your brake caliper. On your caliper, you have your bleeder valve, sometimes this leak, these leak, but more often than not, they jam up and uh, don't bleed for you, but you'll have that. Or sometimes you will um, leak out the piston, and this is like, major um, brake failure when, you've, when you're leaking out your piston. Really any leak in your brake system is a huge failure. It needs to be repaired or replaced. Um, but yeah, if you're leaking out your piston, then it's definitely time for major service. So um, yeah, that's pretty much everywhere in the brake system that you'll get. Also got to remember that a lot of bikes have hydraulic clutches like this Nighthawk. Um, I've been working on the clutch on this bike and you see right here, that is the result of leaking clutch slave cylinder. This is my clutch slave. It's supposed to actuate when, um, when I pull in the clutch, this, uh, this piston is supposed to pop out of it. But what's been happening is this thing is so old and rusted and corroded that whenever I squeeze it, um, it just squirts brake fluid out. So if you guys see how wet it is all around here, this is where it's leaking. So even though this is not part of the brake system, there is still brake fluid involved in it because it uses the same hydraulic fluid. So you have to assess it just like you would um, your brake system. You know, you've got your same basic master cylinder set up with your banjo bolts and your brake lines. Like you got to check for cracks. You got to check here. You got your bleeder valve, just like I mentioned. 
and then um, if you're still getting leaks, you got to open this shit up and uh, see if you're leaking around here. So next is gear oil. A lot of times you'll find it's sort of that piss yellow color. Um, they do make it in other colors as well. It's very similar to motor oil, except it's got very high viscosity compared to motor oil. So you can take it, rub it around your fingers, smell it. It does smell differently than motor oil. That's one way to, uh, to identify it. And then once you're rubbing your fingers like this, it'll get sticky because it's so high viscosity. This is probably one of the least common uh, fluids on a motorcycle. Um, really you only tend to find it if you've got a shaft drive. Uh, I happen to have a shaft drive in my bike and so I'm going to show you where it leaks from. Alright, now shaft drive bikes will have a rear differential just like this one. Um, it can leak in a couple of different places. First right around the plug or the drain plug. Uh, sometimes if you for example, you know, the, the seal has gone bad or it's not tight or whatever, you'll get leaks around there. I've seen leaks right here where it meets up with the hub where the splines are. Um, these uh, shaft drives should not leak into the hub. They should be self-contained, but if they have a bad seal, then um, they might leak inside where the splines meet the hub. And then this isn't a controlled um, seal right here. Right, right where it meets in with the with the hub. It's not like there's a gasket there because the wheel is always rotating. So then you'll have a little bit of dribble right down there. Not a big deal. You just go in there, um, replace your seal. Not a big deal. Similarly, right here where it meets up with the drive shaft housing, uh, sometimes you'll get some leaks. And on bikes like mine, not all shaft drive bikes, but on bikes like mine, you have um, a secondary drive, which is where uh, the the motor meets with the drive shaft and you've got all these various gears in here and so what I do every now and again is I pull this plate off and I check the level of the gear oil that's actually in here um, there's two different places where gear oil is in this bike one is in the pumpkin and one's in here uh, mine as you can see has a very slow leak it always has it leaks right onto the exhaust and so I never see a puddle um, it's just every now and again I'll see a little bit of a little wisp of smoke um, as this you know as a drop falls on the uh, the exhaust. Not a big deal. Always make sure that I have uh, clean um, gear oil in here, so uh, I never have to change it. Totally cool with that. Fill it up every time I change my oil. I put like maybe half a cup full in, um, and we've been good to go for almost fifty thousand miles now. So. Um, but yeah, if you see little dribblings out here, uh, that might be where your leak is coming from. Alright, so next we have antifreeze coolant. This shit is bright, bright green. It's impossible to miss. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's one of the most easily identifiable of these, uh, these chemicals. You can touch it. Very oftentimes you don't have to shove this shit in your mouth, you can just smell it. It smells sweet. Some people say it smells like maple syrup. Um, personally it doesn't to me, it just smells kind of like really gross candy. Um, but this is a really actually a dangerous chemical to leave on the ground because animals will come and, uh, and drink it because it's so sweet and then they'll poison themselves and die. So always be sure, always be sure to clean up any leaks that you find. But um, be extra careful about this because it's pretty toxic poison and it's very attractive to animals. There's not too many places that antifreeze will leak out of but I'll hit on them for you guys. First is your radiator. Um, you may have a leak right here at your junctions right here where the uh, where the hose clips into the radiator. I was dealing with that on this bike earlier this year. Um, you might actually have a puncture in your radiator uh, like like if you pulled up a rock or something or it uh, rusted through you might just see like it's it's a little bit damp or dark here and that means it's it's got a puncture and it needs to be repaired um, also you've got an overflow tank mine is black on this bike you can see it right there um, 
a lot of bikes have a, a white color or sort of a yellow color so you can see it a little bit easier. You've got your hose coming in, hose coming out, you got your cap and you've got it's plastic and so you need to assess whether or not it's cracked. Um, notice too that your, uh, your, um, your radiator drains into this hose which goes into the motor. Um, if uh, it, it connects right here and it's got this uh, this little housing right here sometimes you've got a water pump or a thermostat that's on the outside of the motor sometimes it's inside if you have a leak inside your motor you're probably not going to see it dribbling around on the ground it's probably going to be mixing with your uh, uh, with your oil and so you'll see it you might see differences in the color of the oil through your sight glass um, or if you drain it, you notice that you've got a little bit of water in there, but it wouldn't be leaking externally on the bike. Now, like I mentioned earlier, just because you see motor oil dripping out the bottom of your bike, don't immediately jump to the conclusion that you've got a massive oil leak. It might just be, um, you know, it might be a gas leak, like a gas overflowing problem. Um, so that's why it's important to use all your senses when identifying these leaks, touch it, smell it. If it feels like oil, but it smells like gas, then it's a mixture of the two. So uh, it's important to know, you know, what each of them smell like before you have to identify the problem. Uh, so where does oil leak from? A lot of bikes have these oil coolers up front. These um, take oil from down here at the bottom, run them up here cool them down, send it back down again. They leak every now and again, but usually these things are pretty hardy. I haven't had too many problems with these things. Um, probably the most common source of an oil leak, and you can see it right here, is the valve cover gasket. There is a little rubber gasket here that goes all the way around the valve cover, all the way around. It looks like a big H on this bike, and um, it gets hot, it cools down, it gets hot, it cools down. Eventually the rubber breaks down and it will start to crack. Uh, right here on your motor, this oil is not under pressure. It's just sort of getting thrown around by the valves. And so it's not like, you know, the oil pressure, the, I don't know, whatever, 30 PSI or whatever that you'll find in the rest of the bike. And it's not, you know, the 150 PSI or whatever that you'll find internally in the combustion chamber. It's no pressure and so this is a, a passive system and this oil just sort of leaks out and you'll find that it leaks out um, more often on the kickstand side and more often on the front of the motor if your motor is facing downwards like this one like this is you can see it's sort of facing downwards um, and that's just because that's where the oil sits so if you've got a 20 30 year old bike you know this type of repair is totally up to you a lot of guys are like oh you know one drop oil is too many i'm going to tear this bike down and rebuild it fine whatever I've had a bike that's a little bit stained up in here and dribbly. It's running great. If you want to ignore it, I don't care. That's totally up to you. Um, you will also find oil leaks right around the head gasket right here. Um, not so much this gasket where the jugs meet the crank, but um, the head gasket is where you'll find some oil staining, like especially right underneath the, uh, um, the, the pipes here. Again, if you're not losing compression, it's not that big of a deal to me. But if you guys want to replace the head gasket just because you see a little bit of staining, hey, go for it. Don't care. Um, then you'll find you've got all different kinds of, uh, of, of gaskets and areas where the bike can leak oil from the bottom end. Uh, you have these, these uh, side covers here. You have them one on each side. Um, Oftentimes where your alternator is, it'll get bathed in oil to keep it cool. And so if you have a gasket that's leaking that covers the alternator, you will get a little bit of dribble around there. Um, let me get under here. You've got your oil pan. You can see it's got this sort of green colored gasket around here. That can start to leak. Um, You'll also want to inspect the whole area for damage. You might have picked up a rock or hit a curb or whatever. Maybe the previous owner did and he fixed it with a JB weld and now it's just starting to come loose. I've seen that before. Whatever. Give a good look. The good thing about oil is it doesn't evaporate like gas does and so it will stay stained. You can see this. This has probably been stained for many thousands of miles. So that indicates right there where it's leaking. Um, 
on this bike, we've got this style of uh, oil filter here. This is the oil filter housing. Sometimes they leak around there. So oil leaks are pretty easy to find. Um, on pre oftentimes they just require a replacement of a gasket. Not a big deal. Um, oh, you also want to take a look at these these uh, banjo bolts, which uh, which hold the the oil in, and they send it up to like you know up here, and they might send it to the top end of the motor. Um, so take a look around there. Oil leaks. Everyone flips out in an oil leak. It's really not that big of a deal. Uh, just find out where it is and either tighten down or replace the gasket wherever it's leaking. Water. If you don't know what water is, then uh, I, I can't help you. I'm sorry. Water feels like water. Water smells like nothing. Water feels like water in your hands. You can put water in your mouth. Um, water is water. Water comes from two different places on a motorcycle. First place that you'll find water is in your coolant system. Um, a lot of guys, especially guys who own bikes in the south where it doesn't really freeze, will just fill their coolant up with water. Um, they don't put any antifreeze in and they just run it like that. That's whatever. Water does a good enough job. Um, personally, I don't do it. I think that if the bike is meant to cool with coolant. It should have coolant. Um, coolant is better at transferring heat, but some guys don't want to pay six bucks for a gallon of coolant. They just put water in. Whatever. I'm not here to judge. Um, it does become a problem if, for example, you live in Minneapolis, you find this sweet ass bike all the way down in Key Largo. You fly down there, ride the bike up, your first winter you have major problems because um, the water freezes and it bursts pipes. It can burst little connection or little passageways uh, within the motor. It can cause a lot of problems. Um, so if you have water leakage, um, look for you know in the same places that you will uh, look for your coolant. The second place that you'll find water coming out of your bike is out the exhaust. Water is a natural byproduct of internal combustion. Um, a lot of times on especially foggy or cold days you'll see um, steam coming out of your exhaust as your bike warms up. Um, and every now and again, you know, under certain conditions you'll see water driblets coming out. This is normal, it's not a big deal. Even if the little driblets are stained with uh, stained black, they might be stained from the exhaust smoke or uh, carbon that's been building up inside your pipes. Not a big deal. Um, if you see that, you'll obviously want to assess whether or not it's gasoline. As I pointed out, gasoline might come out if your uh, one of your cylinders is not burning. But um, if it's just water, let it burn off. It should stop in a minute or two. Finally, we have battery acid. battery acid is clear it looks just like water you can touch it you can smell it if you're confused you can taste it give it a little taste battery acid uh, is not going to kill you if you uh, just give it a little taste just like I did oftentimes it tastes extremely acidic uh, obviously or like citrus um, like if you've got one of those sour citrus candies, it'll sometimes taste like that. Um, it's really gross. Uh, just spit it right back out, you'll be fine. Battery acid leaking out of your battery is actually pretty common. That's why they sell them with these long overflow hoses, which sort of just hang down. Um, it causes when uh, you have a dysfunction in your charging system and you're putting too much power into the battery, maybe you've got a bad regular rectifier or whatever, uh, the thing will start to burn. Not burn literally, but you'll burn out your battery and um, it'll overflow the, uh, the, the fluid inside and you'll have little dribbles that come out. Um, not that big of a deal. You just have to, you might have to replace the battery and then fix whatever's going on in your, uh, in your charging system. Um, also, it's plastic, you know, you might have hit something or it might be, you know, crimped in here and it might be leaking just down here or one of these little caps has flown off for some reason. Uh, but, uh, yeah, generally if you find battery acid on the floor, it's pretty easy to, to diagnose. All right, so those are the seven basic fluids. I hope nobody calls in and said that they had to go to the emergency room because I told them to drink battery acid. Um, yeah, guys, just use your head and you'll be fine. 
you have any questions about all this, let me know.